In this video, we are going to discuss various aspects of protein requirement in pregnancy. As you can guess, there is no simple answer to this. So what we'll do is we'll discuss this topic within the following framework. At the end of this video, you will know what is the official recommended dietary allowance of protein in pregnancy. You will know what are the actual measured values about protein requirement in various stages of pregnancy. Towards the end, you will know about some experiments where extra protein was given in pregnancy and how did it benefit the fetus or the baby to be born. We'll also see what are the protein requirements in nursing mothers. At the end, I'm going to give you some bonus information and it will help you understand these numbers much better. So let's begin the journey now. So what is the recommended dietary allowance of protein in pregnancy? This is the official number and it is 1.1 gram per kilogram of body weight of the mother per day. Now mind you, this is an estimate. The reason is this RDA is calculated using something called nitrogen balance studies and they are not possible to be done for pregnant women. So how do they estimate this RDA? They start with the RDA for normal adults, which is 0.8 grams per kilogram of body weight per day. And to this, they add the protein mass that is added by pregnant women and fetus during the pregnancy period. So this number comes to 1.1 grams. Now there are some problems with that. Number one, RDA is not the optimal requirement. It is just to prevent disease in 98% of the mothers. So what RDA tells you is not the best amount of protein you should have. It's the minimum amount of protein you should have to keep yourself free from malnutrition and disease. It's almost like telling you that these are the least marks you should get in school to pass. And we never tell our children to get the least possible marks. So you want to keep this number in perspective with respect to that. Second, and I will not go into the depth on this, the statistical method used for that calculation was wrong. So that 0.8 grams per kilogram per day was a wrong number. It's actually 0.99 as per the correct statistical method calculations. In other words, the official recommended dietary allowance of protein should be 1.29 or 1.3 grams per kilogram of body weight of the mother per day, not 1.1 gram per kilogram per day. Let's go to the next section. Let's go and look at what are the actual protein requirements measured by experiments in various stages of pregnancy. Let's take the early pregnancy. By early pregnancy, we mean 11 to 20th week. There were two studies on this. Both of them noticed an EAR, which is estimated average requirement of 1.2 grams per kilogram per day. Now EAR is what is required for 50% of the people. That is 50% of the mothers at 1.2 grams per kilogram per day suffered malnutrition. And RDA from one study, the other study did not check RDA. That RDA was 1.66 grams per kilogram of mother's weight per day in the period of 11 to 20 weeks of pregnancy. And the official guideline, which is an estimate, says 1.1 gram. Now, when I'm giving you these numbers, you can look at the bottom. There is something called DOI, that is Digital Object Identifier. So these are the research papers. So anybody wants the official proof of it, you can go to the website called doi.org. And in that, you type these numbers. Once you type that number, it will bring up the original document from wherever it is there in the world on web. So DOI is a way to keep this entire information in a sort of an online library. So in the early stage, that is 11 to 20th week, you should look at 1.66 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight of the mother per day. This is the example. If 60 kilograms is the body weight of the mother, and this is the weight when she's pregnant, not before pregnancy. 60 kilograms of body weight, 1.66 RDA should suggest that the mother should have 100 grams of protein per day. Let us look at what the data says about late stage pregnancy. So if you look at this data again, two different studies, one looked at almost towards the end of the pregnancy, 36 weeks, and the other one looked at 32nd to 38th week. Both of them showed EAR or estimated average requirement of 1.52 grams per kilogram per day. That means about 36th week of pregnancy, 50% of the women who took 1.52 grams per kilogram of their body weight per day ended up with some malnutrition problems. Only for 50% of mothers, it was enough protein. 
that means it needs to be higher and in fact that number is 1.77 grams per kilogram per day of body weight now mind you the official guideline still says 1.1 gram per kilogram per day and that means the official guidelines do not distinguish between early pregnancy and late pregnancy whereas in real life late pregnancy will need more protein requirement because the baby is growing and so this is a summary 1.77 grams per kilogram per day within 30 second to 38th week so here's an example if 60 kilograms is the body weight of the pregnant lady then she should have 106 grams of protein per day now let us see what is the data about protein supplementation in pregnancy. By supplementation, I mean taking extra protein than normal. And they found 34% lower risk of low gestational weight, 32% lower risk of low birth weight. Gestational weight gain is the weight mother gains during pregnancy and birth weight is the weight of the baby that was born. And 38% lower risk of stillbirth or women who took extra protein during pregnancy had this benefit for the baby. This information was compiled from analysis of 16 interventional studies. It is called meta-analysis. There are two points, of course. These observations were for sedentary women. If a woman is active, going to office, working, she will need even more protein to get this benefit. And obviously, women who were undernourished, maybe from some kind of a challenge background, who were undernourished, had more benefit than the well-nourished women, which should be obvious, because if you give nutrition, the person who has least amount of nourishment will benefit more than the person who has decent amount of nourishment. Now, let us look at what is the requirement of protein for lactating mothers, breastfeeding mothers. Again, there is no research data on this. And the estimation of RDA is done with a very simple logic. They have taken the adult protein requirement, which is 0.8 grams per kilogram of body weight per day, and they have added the breast milk protein output to it. And so they call this as the RDA of protein for nursing mothers, because that should be the protein requirement of the mothers. And this number comes to 1.3 grams per kilogram of mother's body weight per day for nursing mothers. However, there were two studies. One found that if you give 1 gram per kilogram of body weight a day, 100% of the nursing moms, 100% of the women who were studied ended up showing symptoms of protein malnourishments. So 1 gram per kilogram per day was severely low intake for 100% of these ladies. When they gave 1.5 grams per kilogram per day, only 50% of the ladies showed malnourishment symptoms of protein. 50% of the mothers did not show this. So for those women, 1.5 grams was adequate. What this tells us is taking 1.5 gram per kilogram per day is going to take care of 50% of women's requirement during lactation and rest of the 50% of the women are going to find some kind of a protein deficiency. But we don't know what it would be for 97 or 98% of the women. That's how these numbers are calculated. And so we say at least take 1.5 grams of protein per kg of your body weight per day if you are nursing a baby. And so the whole summary of this discussion is in this chart. You can take a screenshot of this if you want the entire summary of this talk. Official guidelines during pregnancy say 1.1 gram per kilogram per day. In early stages of pregnancy, you should take 1.66 grams of protein per kilogram of your body weight every day. In the late stages of your pregnancy, you should take 1.77 grams of protein per kilogram of your body weight every day. And the official guidelines during lactation is taking 1.3 grams per kilogram per day, but that's not enough. The actual data shows at least 1.5 grams per kilogram per day of protein you should take if you are a nursing mother. And I promised you some bonus information which I'm going to cover now. You might be wondering what these numbers are, EAR, RDA, and AI, and I'll quickly tell you what they mean. Estimated average requirement is the number that takes care of the requirement of 50% of the healthy individual. So it does not take care of the remaining 50% individuals. That means if you give EAR to somebody, 50% chance that his requirement will be met. RDA or recommended dietary allowance on the other hand is the amount of the nutrient that if you give to a group of people 98% of them at least will meet their nutrient requirement. So the assumption is in a group if you can take care of at least 98% of the people you are keeping everyone healthy. 
So if you are taking an idea of anything, you can safely assume 98% chance it will take care of your nutrition requirement. You will not go into deficiency or malnutrition. You will not go into a disease condition. So remember that RDA is not about how to be optimally healthy. RDA is about not falling sick, not getting deficiency, not getting malnourishment. And in some situations, you cannot calculate an RDA because these kind of tests are difficult. Some nutrients are extremely small in quantities. Some nutrients cannot be tested on small babies. In such cases, you look at what is called adequate intake. These are not accurate numbers. This is a rough number. I hope this was useful to you. If you want to see more videos on this topic, click on this. If you want to subscribe to our channel, click on this on the right side. And here you can also see some of our most popular videos by clicking in the box on the left. And remember when you go through all these, ignorance is a very bad strategy when it comes to staying healthy.